All right. Hello again, everyone. Uh, this time I'm going to go through a tutorial that I got in a question one of my videos, as we can see here. Uh, he wants to know how to make the computer send waves of units attacking a player. So there are two ways, or multiple ways, of doing this. Uh, right now I'm going to go through the way of making the un uh, computer create units. So first I'm going to go for player one here and just create a bunch of tors for me, for the player, up here. Then player two, the computer. I'm going to try to keep this uh, tutorial under, say, 10, uh, 10 minutes, so I can post it in a single YouTube video. Would be nice. And I'll do another one for uh, a different method of making them create units. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a bunch of warp gates here. Or actually, I only need I only need one warp gate. The computer is quite awesome. Um, second thing I'm going to go do is I'm going to go into the data editor. I'm going to go to abilities. I'm going to type in warp for warp gate, and I'm going to find this warp gate train ability. And I go to the info here and double click. Here you'll find warp in salad. Double click on that. And if I move it into your view, scroll down. And here you'll find time use and time. Time is how long it takes for the salad to actually warp in. We can leave it at 5. Time use is the cooldown. So if we set this to 0 0.5, so the computer can warp in salads really, really quickly. Then we're going to go into the triggers. I'm going to delete these normal triggers. Then I'm going to create a wheeler for the player one for the entire map so that I can see what the computer is doing. Then I'm going to set player property, um, player property, modify player property for player two. Set minerals to. 100,000. I'm going to go into the player properties up here on the map. Player 2, set it to computer. AI computer, start location, these things don't matter. Race, I could set the protos, it doesn't really matter. And that's fine. Then I'm going to add a new trigger here. Uh, create units. Actually, I'm going to do one more thing in this here. I'm going to add init here. Init melee AI for player 2. Uh, there is another function called start AI, but I had it crash my game when I called it. I think this is because the data is not in the game files yet. So it will probably be a better way of doing this once the game is out. You can start the AI properly, but for this tutorial, we're going to use this one here. And then we're going to set the APM, set APM, actions per minute for the computer, up to 2,000. This way, he will create the units really, really quickly. If it's default, I think it's default at 200 or something like that. And even if you set down the creation speed uh, in the data editor, it will still create them rather slowly. By setting it to 2,000, it will spam them completely. So in the create units here, I'm going to make a, a periodic event, say every 15 seconds of game time. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a text message to all players, creating units, so that we know that it triggers. Then there is a train command, train. There's also a build command if you want the units to build, uh, the computer to build structures. Train, say, 10, unit type, sort, player 2, town just leave at minus 1, and priority we can leave at 0. Now we need one more trigger. Uh, Units to attack. Events. Unit becomes idle. 
this happens whenever the unit has nothing to do. You could also, this is a bit buggy sometimes. Um, what you could do is you can set up a region around the area where you're creating the units and then just use a for each unit loop like we went through in the basic triggers and loop through each unit there that is in there every few, uh, I don't know, every five seconds and then send them to attack. Just keep sending them to attack every five seconds to attack wherever you want. And to make them attack, you issue, or issue order. Unit, triggering unit, the unit that becomes idle. Order, targeting a point. I'm going to go back into the data editor and add a point. I press P to go to this points level layer. And then I take this point and stack it here, point zero zero one. Back into trigger editor, attack, point zero zero one. And that's really it. This will be a really quick tutorial because I don't want to go over 10 minutes. Hopefully that this explains enough. Let's go through it quickly. This is just to reveal the map for our player, uh, set the minerals for the computer player, start the AI. You need to do this, else it will not do anything when you trigger the train. Set the APM to 2000 so that it can build really quickly. Every 15 seconds, we're going to show this message and make it train 10 slots at any town. I didn't get the towns to work properly either. I suspect it's something you need the rest of the game files for once again. I might be wrong, but uh, I think it will be easier to do this stuff once the game is out. And if any unit is idle, then we will order it to attack point zero one, so attack move to that point and will attack anyway in anything in its path. We also went into the data editor on the warp gate train ability and we went into this info and we changed some settings here. Uh, this is how all train abilities are set up, so if you want to go to barracks for instance, you type barrack here and you'll find a barrack train and you'll find the marines for instance, you can reduce the time it takes to create marines down here or stuff like that. All right, I am going to try this in-game now. Uh, I'm not sure if I can add sound on this just later. I found out it was a bit laggy when I recorded with this tool, so I'm going to fraps the in-game, and maybe I'll be able to add sound over it. If not, I'll see you in my next tutorial. All right, so here we are in-game, and um, we'll see the computer player up here. And soon the trigger should fire and should start creating units. There we go. And once the unit is done, it should become idle. It's sometimes a bit buggy. You will see some of the units go to attack and others just hang around. This is why you usually want to use a region and check every few seconds if any unit is just standing there doing nothing and just send them to attack. So you'd create a region around the area where the units are being created and then send them down to attack. You'll see uh, some of the units hang back, but it is working, and it's a basis for that you can build upon yourself to hopefully create some cool maps with it. So that's all for this time.